President has one of the indicators how much interest the person had in his initial years to acquire knowledge. It is so many kind of products coming. Unless the employees in the bank are knowledgeable, they will not be able to deliver the product as the customer desires. The banking also has changed very substantially by, uh, from the time when we people joined myself or Mr. Bhaskaran and today. There is a lot of difference. I joined in 1975 and uh, at that time the bank used to de design a product and sell it. Whether the customer desires a product or not, this is the product we have, you take it or leave it. But today, if we have that approach, we'll be out of business. Today we have to design a product, probably sometimes customize it, for the need of the customer. We are, the market requires that we should identify the needs of customer and design a product and sometimes even hidden needs of the customer. The customer has not to tell anything. We have to ourselves assess what the customer requires and probably design a product. The banking has of course changed in many ways from the past. Today, as Mr. Baskaran said, technology is one of the main drivers of the business. Technology, but the basic requirement of banking is to serve the customer, which is as important as it was maybe uh, 30 years back. In 1970s, when we people joined, of course in 69 when the banks in the country were nationalized, major 14 banks. None of the bank was nationalized because the banks were weak. Unlike what is happening today in the West, the banks which are being acquired by the government or the bank, uh, the government is pushing money there and nationalizing in a way. The banks are weak there, that is why they are nationalizing. They want to save the institutions. But in India, the banking system was nationalized, or major banks were nationalized in 1969 with altogether a different objective. The objective was to reach the millions of population who were deprived of the banking system. Banks were mostly backed by major industrial houses. Very few banks like Canara Bank or Syndicate Bank or some small banks were there which were not having a backing of an industrial house. Those days Tata used to own one of the banks, Central Bank probably. Uh, Dalmia used to have a bank, Birla used to have a bank. So the banking system was not going to the villages where 75% of the population of India lived. Today we are, even today we are talking of financial inclusion. You can imagine the position at that time in 69, when probably bank branches used to be only in major cities. So what I want to convey is that banking system, even in 60s, when it was nationalized, it was quite robust and strong. There was no fear of any kind of problem. Then in 70s, the objective of the nationalization was to expand, bring out schemes for the uh, rural masses. That is how the agriculture loans, the system of uh, making a lead district for bank, so that overall development takes place in that district was started. By virtue of that, a lot of employment was generated we guys got the employment in the bank mainly because of the expansion and later on we rose the ladder also due to expansion so we are grateful to the country for giving us this opportunity. Then in the 80s the banking system had almost stabilized, the expansion also had taken place and it was felt that now there is a need to integrate the, again not on the banking front, it was a crisis on the uh, forex reserves we probably were left out with a very small reserve which could meet our 15 days requirement only. So in 
the economy was opened up so that we could attract a lot of investment from the world. And it succeeded. By opening up, we got a lot of investment from the world and a lot of liberalization was done, FDI was opened, FIIs were allowed to come. The banking also, because banking is one of the important parts of the economy, therefore banking also had to be liberalized. We allowed, the country allowed private banks to come up. There is nothing wrong in the private banking system. I would say even today that private banks brought in a lot of competition, a lot of technology. It helped all of the consumers because consumers could get a very, very cost-effective product. There was no monopoly of public sector thereafter. We had to compete in the marketplace. Though we, any, any public sector, whether it is bank or an insurance company, when it is opened up, new institutions will come. Market share of public sector obviously has to come down. But fortunately, the public sector banks also took this up as a challenge and saw to it that market share doesn't dwindle very drastically. Even today, I think after about 13-14 years of private banks coming, the market share of uh, public sector banks today also is close to about 75% or so, which is quite good. Insurance, I suppose, the market share of LIC is uh, about 70%. So to that extent, I would say, it's a tribute to the public sector that it competed well with the private sector. Also, most of the private sector professionals, again, came up from public sector. Most of the banks which were in private sector got chairmen from the uh, old public sector banks. Most of the senior management came from there. So ultimately, the banking itself became very, very competitive and uh, it was good for the economy, good for the uh, consumers because they could uh, get competitive products at competitive price. So, in a way, I would say the banking system has matured too much. And you see what is happening all over the world, Northern Rock. Northern Rock at that time was one of the good banks of UK. Still, it had to face problem because liquidity was an issue. They were lending millions of loans, housing loans, but their fund sources Resources were coming from few big institutions. So it was short-term money used for long-term lending. Once the subprime issue came up, a lot of uh, world institutions who were lending them got into liquidity crunch. They could thereafter not roll over those kind of funds which they had earlier given to Northern Rock. Overnight, there were queues outside the bank, literally, and uh, had the government of uh, United Kingdom not taken an immediate step, they got into at night itself for a discussion and all, next day they nationalized that bank. Had they not done that, that could have been a fiasco like Lemon Brothers has gone, that way that bank also would have been confident that Reserve Bank of India took such steps that none of the Indian banks had to come to that situation. Even though the economy was opened up, a lot of uh, freedom was given to banks to uh, give whatever rate they would like to give, either for deposit or for advance. See, prior to uh, 90s, the Reserve Bank of India used to fix up interest rates either for deposit or for advance. But they gave freedom to banks and banking system was good enough that they fixed those rates and each bank still earned reasonably good profit. The credit goes to regulator, credit goes to uh, bank professionals who with the kind of uh, uh, knowledge they acquired out of experience or out of uh, courses offered by the Institute of Bankers 
they could uh, face this situation. Today, again, knowledge is always a power, as I said, but today it is all the more necessary. So an alliance with, between two great institutions will definitely help in contributing to the uh, increasing of knowledge amongst bank professionals. I congratulate both the institutions who have come together to provide this kind of course in Hyderabad, which will be useful to large number of bank, bank officials who are uh, located somewhere in Hyderabad or Andhra Pradesh to take up this course. The course content, as uh, Mr. Master has mentioned, is uh, probably taking into account all kinds of problems and it's a dynamic thing. Every day new developments are taking place. I'm sure these inputs will be there in the course which you give to uh, the students who come here to study. And uh, whatever support the banking system would be able to extend, definitely we will do it because uh, this is ultimately for the benefit of banks that when our employees get uh, more knowledgeable, definitely it's going to help the banks. Because we, I tell my own employees many a times when we go to the training center, we also have our own training centers. Uh, not for educating our own employees, but also we have <coughs> entrepreneurial development institutes on the lines. Even Canada Bank was having uh, institutes where we give training of about two to three months to entrepreneurs to acquire entrepreneurial skills. Even some of the uh, training programs are run for the skill development, but uh, most of it is to acquire the entrepreneurial skills. Because many businesses fail, not because of any bad intention on the part of the entrepreneur, but on because he is ill-equipped. He doesn't know how to manage his money, how to manage business, how to do his purchases, how to do his marketing. So we have some institutes. In uh, Andhra we have what, uh, uh, 10 places where we train these entrepreneurs. Thereafter they also are given extended certain loans. And we have observed that these loans very rarely fail because the people have acquired those skills which are required to run a business. So not only those uh, entrepreneurs, I tell my employees that, uh, look, in 70s and 80s, because the products were very few, the banking was relatively simple. Uh, you had to take deposits at lower rate, you had to lend at higher rate, you are bound to make profits. And there was nothing like uh, Basel 1, Basel 2 and all that. So anything, whether you recover it or not, you book profit. You may recover it much later or not at all, but in the year you debit uh, the party's account and credit the interest, you have profit. But things have changed now. Now, if you don't recover for three months the interest or the installment, the account doesn't earn any interest. So it's a useless account for us. We call it non-performing asset. So, if our employees have to uh, really perform for the bank, they have to acquire a lot of techniques so that these loans do not go bad or do not become non-performing. They have to be alert all the time. Certain skills which will be given by these courses will have to be used so that they can keep these loans performing. Apart from that, in 70s and 80s, customer used to be happy if only you could serve him with a broad smile. There was hardly anything he expected. If he goes to a bank and he would just, uh, you talk nicely to him, he will open up his box and whatever deposit he has, he will put it. And employees also, bank also would be happy if he gives deposit. He will not ask for loan, bank will be much happier. Because a few borrowers in some big places will be given money and with that the bank would uh, 
make profits. But today, in fact, we are looking for more of uh, good credit rather than deposits. Because deposits, if we want to raise, we can raise anywhere. And credit, we have to really select good borrowers who will not ditch us or whose loans will not go become non-performing. So that is most important. So our employees have to acquire a lot of skills. It is not enough if you serve with a smile. Smile is necessary even today. But then, apart from that, it requires a lot of other uh, skills. So I am sure this kind of course will provide opportunity for bank employees also to interact with the uh, faculty and uh, maybe other students also because there will be some courses where definitely interaction will be possible. It is uh, good for the students of this institute who are regular students, uh, not much of exposure into the uh, banking or finance or uh, or uh, other institutions and for our employees also it will be good the interaction with the faculty as well as the fresh minds who can definitely give a lot of inputs. I once again thank you for giving me an opportunity. Thank you very much. Thank you sir. Thank you very much. We now, we now have the most important and the most awaited event, signing of MOU between IIBF and IPE. I request our beloved director and the CEO of IIBF to just carry In 1984, in 1982, we started one part-time MBA for working institutes. 
and uh, all the bankers and practitioners in manufacturing sector and service they have benefited with this course still we are running this course successfully in 1995 we started uh, full time PG uh, business management and our students are doing exceedingly well in the industry and last year we added one diploma PG diploma marketing and retail management to capture the requirements of retail industry and this year we have started this PG diploma in banking insurance finance and research so we are really very happy and we have to thank you for uh, having this collaboration. I am sure we are going to help the banking industry and we are going more closer to the banking industry. Thank you once again for giving us this opportunity and we look forward for your uh, fruitful cooperation and help at every stage. And we assure you that we will uh, maintain the highest administrations and we help the banking community a lot. And uh, I thank the uh, 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 director of Amra Bank for uh, taking his time in spite of busy schedule. He, has, he was having so many meetings but he was kind enough, kind enough to spend some time here at IP, sir. We thank you very much sir for coming over here and we look forward for your help and IP and Amra Bank have been working together in various forums as our director Mishra Ji said it is Amra Bank which started the scheme here when uh, Chairman Ram Krishnan came here and we have very fond memories with Amra Bank and we are very happy to be associated with you sir and we look forward for your help and uh, we will be coming to you and we have to work more closely with you and other banks in Twin Cities and we are ready to conduct training programs in fact IP has been conducting many programs in project appraisal and uh, many areas related to banking and we request you also to spare your valuable time to address our uh, full time students here PJ Pro and Banking Insurance Finance Service. Thank you once again, sir, for coming to ICM. I thank the Minister, our director. We have been the main force behind the whole thing. He motivates our faculty to take up new responsibilities. The credit goes to him. And I thank all my faculty colleagues who have been with me, behind me, in taking any initiative. So I thank all my faculty colleagues, staff, colleagues, all the students who are here, who are the main source of inspiration for all of us. Thank you, Vandal. And uh, I will be failing in my duty if I uh, fail to thank uh, Professor Balachandran, Professor Amal Nathan, Professor Balvi, who have come all the way to Mumbai. They are back in the IIM here. Thank you, Mr. Amal Nathan. And we are sure that we are waiting many more times ahead. And uh, we are going to work together for making this program a grand success. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Thank you, sir. I request the students to stay back for a couple of minutes. I request the students to stay back for a couple of minutes.